Hi folks, again I'm Charles with the, the product developer at the home of the BioBlaster and, and I'm here in Alliston, Ontario, Canada with um, Jeff and Tom from Odor Busters and uh, they've been running a successful odor removal business for the last four years and you have not one but two trailers? Two trailers, yeah. Two trailers and several ozone generators. I think we've got nine or ten of your machines right now. Nine or ten yeah. machines. Yeah. And so you have really um, taken this thing in a really diverse uh, set of, of ways. You've got a core business of hockey equipment, sanitizing and deodorizing. You've done um, life jackets, you told me, for some of the camps that are up here. You've done um, jerseys. I remember you telling me you've done some jerseys for some of the local uh, yes. sports yes. programs. That's yes. correct. Um, what other kinds of things have you done? We've done uh, furniture in the trailer. Furniture. Yeah, with the mothballing. We've done housing, houses. We've done uh, cottages. I've done RVs. Uh, a customer had a new RV and they had mothballs put in there with uh, Febreze. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> They got a really stop. good white paper yes. that'll send you 87 <laughs> times. Yes, and they couldn't, uh, they couldn't get it out. So uh, uh, with the ozone machine, I happened to remove it. It was uh, within, I would say, probably eight hours running it. And uh, customers was happy because it was only a year old. RB. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I've had uh, customers at work that where I work for the government, which is uh, boats. They do boats. a lot of boatings. Uh, they got a lot of smell. And... Um, so, so you've done it all, prepared. cars, yeah. boats, RVs, RVs, hockey equipment, uh, other yeah. types of sporting equipment, jerseys, yeah. houses, yeah. done apartments? Done apartments, condos, condos. Also uh, mentioned earlier the subway seats. Subway yes. seats, yeah. Well, yeah, that's so, so I want to back up here. So let's just say that I'm out there in internet land and, and I'm looking at starting my own business. And, you know, I check out Subway and I check out all the different franchises. You know, you're pretty much looking at somewhere between forty dollars to $200,000 investment to try and get into one of these businesses. And a lot of times the profit doesn't come right away. Okay. And, you know, the thing that I really like about my ozone machines, besides the fact that they work, and besides the fact that they're rugged, and besides the fact that, in my opinion, they're some of the better ozone machines in the market, is that it's a really low cost, low barrier to entry yeah. way to start making some extra money. It yeah. sure is. And, and Tom and I both have experience yeah. in other businesses, and, yeah. and we know what it costs and can cost. Yeah. And for what we put together, your equipment, trailer, a little bit of common sense, uh, some trial and failure in terms of designing our, our trailer to yeah. get it to work yeah. the way we want it to work, mm -hmm. and and now it's you know the phone the phone rings you got to have a good website, uh, do a little advertising, a little marketing, brand yourself a little bit, and then the word of mouth starts to. So how was it when you got thinking. started? So walk me through this. You bought your first ozone generator. That was you. Yeah, I contacted Charles with four years ago when I was talking to Jeff and I said, you know what, we're running a little business in town that we do on the side at that time. And I said, you know what, we got to start, I just thought, I seen your site about ozoning and I was thinking no one around here does hockey gear, which came to my mind. So I said, let's build a trailer and do hockey gear. Yeah. So we started working with that and got your machine and through trial and error we ended up the way we were, but then I am going to be retiring within the next couple of years out of the government and I want to do a part-time job and so I thought there's no better way of being thinking that uh, this is the cheapest and works the best and gives me more jobs out of a trailer that's mobile that I would love to do as a retirement and that's what really really got my, my attention. There's so many jobs you could do just from that trailer. And for the price, it, you can't beat it. So and you've actually made a profit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. From day one, pretty much? Yeah, pretty much. How long did it take you to recoup well, your investment? Well, our, our startup costs would have been so, yeah. less than 10 grand. Yeah, yeah. That's, the well, that's with equipment, trailer, rigging up the trailer, less than $10,000. And 
you know, I, I sell real estate. Yeah. So I started to just through my own clients, we we list a house, and it's a it's a known factor that if a house has an odor in it, mm -hmm. that you could you may have to discount that house as much as ten percent. Ten percent. Because of first impressions, people walk in, and it could be could be they were smoking in their house. It could be pet odors. Yeah. Uh, that that are significant for a new buyer when they walk in and the first thing they do when they walk in is they turn around and walk back out. So what, what ends up happening is that people have to discount, discount, discount the price of that home to get a buyer. So what I figured out is that if I could go in and get rid of the smell. And the alternative is paint and carpet pretty much. That's right. That's right, and and so so I, I you know Tom and I started with with a couple of homes. We yeah. went out together and and we'd set the machines up and we'd let the Practice. machines run Practice, and, and yeah. we'd let them run for five hours and find out okay that wasn't enough and then we'd do it for eight hours and yeah. finally we figured out what it would take. Yeah, there is a learning curve. Yes, yeah. for yeah. anyone that's looking at starting your own business, I don't care what kind of business yeah. it is. There's a learning curve, and odor removal is. Probably not that steep of a learning curve, but odors are different. Yeah. And yeah, there are true. different times required for different odors. Yeah. Every situation, every house is a different size. Every odor is different. Different so, to architectural exactly. uh, configurations. Yeah, yeah it, it sure is. is. You know, so could you speak to that? Because, you know, I've, always, I've got a lot of customers that want to buy one ozone machine to start their business. And, you know, I always encourage people, buy three. Mm -hmm. And if you can afford it, buy the carpet machine. Because if you've got three machines, you can put one on each level of a yes. first floor, second floor basement. And the reason I tell them to buy three machines isn't because I want to sell three machines. And I know a lot of guys that are new to this industry think, ah, Charlie's just trying to triple his sales. But re and the reality is that ozone's heavier than air. That's right. It's got to be moved around. And when you can generate from multiple points, it helps you with awkward architectural layouts. Well, that's, that's, that's uh, we found absolutely too. true. Yeah. And I don't, think we, I don't think we've done a house with less than three machines in it. No. I don't care how big the house is. Even if it's a small bungalow, we'll still put the three machines in it and, and shock that house. Yeah. And in fact, I did a house... Because overkill just means you never have to come back. That's right. I did a house over the Christmas holidays and the people took the time to call me in the, early in the new year to tell me how impressed they were and it was it was a serious serious pet owner situation okay and they called me made a point I didn't ask them to call they called me out of the blue and said we just want to thank you we can't believe how great our house smells we really really appreciate your service and now our do you ever try and um, set people like that up on a recurring uh, program? Because I think that's where a lot of my guys have, haven't got very sophisticated in their marketing, yeah. but I really think there's a, a possibility to set up recurring revenue streams. There, like there is, there is certainly, and... Um, the know, pets, we, I'm sure they didn't kill the pets, no, right? No, no, they kept their cats. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and she, she uh, has actually asked me to stay in touch with them. Yeah. And the great thing about it is that we'll have a fantastic testimonial for our website. Uh, unsolicited by somebody that we haven't even asked for, they just, they just love, love the service. But, and this is another thing that I've been trying to convey to most of my business customers, and that is that the most valuable tool you have for getting new business, besides maybe the wrapped uh, lettering on your trailer or your vehicle, is, is your cell phone video camera or your video camera. And it's, it's really something that most of my business customers fail to implement. Have you ever taken a video testimonial from your customers? I, I, I've not. Uh, but we are currently right now we're we're rebuilding our site. Yes. And uh, I have a, a number of customers locally that we'll go back to, mm -hmm. and we'll get those testimonials in. And, because and I'll tell you, you know, site. it is really powerful, and that's why I'm here in, in Canada. You know, you just you made a new machine order, and I could have shipped them to you, but I I asked if I could come up here and interview you because I can tell people all day long that my machines are more powerful, that they're more durable, that they're better, that they blow harder, that they get the machine, the gas away from the box, all those things I tell people a thousand times and it isn't nearly as powerful as, <coughs> you know, you sharing your real stories yeah, yeah. about the things that, that you've 
use the ozone for? Well, I'll, I'll give you an example um, how critical it is to have good equipment. There are, um, I've ran into a couple of, of wannabe uh, uh, ozone guys. guys. Yeah. And they're using these tiny little machines, mm -hmm. uh, very weak output. Yeah. And they'll get a call to go into someone's home. And for instance, the pet odor that I did over Christmas. Yeah. You, it's impossible. The output of your machines, 25, 35, 40,000 milligrams, the new machines we just got from you, 40,000 milligrams. The machines these other guys use were five, 500 milligram machines. Oh, so you're never so, going to get it. So done. it's impossible. And they go in and they, they try and do the job and they don't get good reviews. They've got to go back 10 times and finally they just go, sorry, I, I can't get rid of this. And there are, there are even some uh, new knockoff uh, so-called competitors um, that have got into the ozone space, and they're they're claiming high outputs, but they're they're still relying on little tiny fans and yeah. and some of the other things that I discovered years ago just are not effective in making the ozone work. And it, and it gets you off to a real bad start yeah. on your business. So much business right now is just coming from word of mouth. Yeah, yeah, word yeah. of mouth. Great. And you you go in and you do a good job and you get us unsolicited tes testimonials from from customers. So you're actually to the point now where you get a lot of business already without right. anything. Yeah, that's right. No advertising. Just that's right. The the word that's spread in your area. Well, we're very unique. Right? We're mobile. Yeah. Uh, we and can, you're not in a real high population area. This is a rural is. type yeah. of city. This is what twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And then a, a population base, a town with 25,000 people, um, they're still running two trailers and 10 ozone generators and making money. And now, just, you do trying. move, you don't stay in your town. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And we'll, we'll probably need to have another trailer before the end of this year. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're still in the real estate game. That's right. You're still working for the government. So this is, by and large, a part-time business for you that you want to take full-time yeah I want to run it full-time and, and we, build the trailer like as a one unit you know job type idea like we talked about mm -hmm. you know somebody wanted to buy it and they can do a house they can do an RV they can throw the hockey gear in there they can do you know they can do so many things out of that trailer for such a low cost that's what I love and that's what I want to do yeah well the spring of the year is coming up people open up their boats yeah. People open up their RVs, RVs yeah. their cottages, they all smell. Yeah. And they're You're not far from the Great Lake here. No, we're not. We're so not. you got There's a lot of, uh, I noticed you got a lot of the same lake effect cloud <laughs> cover that we get in Cleveland, Ohio, so, which is so, uh, that's right. good for humidity. So I mean, the, the, there's so many applications for yeah. ozone that takes a little imagination and a little bit of legwork, but there's tons of business out there. Okay, so we talked about your first thing you did is you buy the ozone machines and you start practicing on your own yeah. listings right That's pretty right. much did you give away jobs to oh, friends yeah. and family oh absolutely yeah did a lot treat a lot. your own house yes yeah. i treated my own house <laughs> yeah. I put, uh, before i built the trailer just to test the ozone <laughs> machine i actually filled my the, my van full of my daughter's hockey gear and i actually used the ozone machine in the van to see how it came out, and it came out perfectly. That's right. So it was a good, you know, you know, test to see. It was a van. It was enclosed. I put the machine in, and it, the gear came out perfect. So and and that by the way, these guys have been in this business so long. They they sent in one of their oldest machines for service yeah. this past week. It was my very first design, and I only mm -hmm. sold that machine for about five months before I improved uh, the overall design. And yet that. And what my in my mind the worst designed ozone generator I ever made still worked for these guys still for working. five years. We've got two of them. Got two of them. And the other one's still working. Still it's running. Still running. Yeah. And so you know it is possible for ozone equipment to to run for a long time. But ozone is an extremely aggressive molecule, and ozone machines need to be serviced. I mean, sure. that's any tool needs to be serviced if you're using it frequently, but ozone is even more so. Well, I think now with the number of machines we have, we'll have to probably make an annual trip down with the machines and just drop them off for, <laughs> well, for a quick tune-up, you know? And, and, and that's, you, you, have to, you have to keep your equipment running. You, know? right. you, you don't want to be down, you don't want someone to call you and say, can you come and do such and such a job? And you go, well, whoops, you know, you, you have to have good equipment. That is what 
literally got me making the ozone generators. Two things. The first story I told you earlier today. The other thing is the machines I found that work the best in this industry, besides mine, were AirZone. And I think they still are the AirZone machines. Yeah, I've done An AirZone XT28000 is a great machine. Cost $2,800, and my men on my mold remediation crews would break them somewhere between the six and 12 month period. And that wasn't what was bad about it. They, they made big gas and they turned the air blue, and you've seen that, right? You've seen the air turn bluish with a haze of ozone gas, right? Oh yeah. Because a lot of people have never seen that and don't believe it when I tell them on the phone. You can oh, actually yeah. see ozone, right? Yeah, yeah, especially in the trail. At high concentrations. <laughs> right. Come out. So, and you're in a place where there's pretty big houses. Uh, yeah, I know it's driving around here. There's some high, giant three, four levels. levels. Yes. Yeah. So, so with the, the ozone machine with AirZone, the problem, the biggest issue I had with air machines is not that they broke, because all equipment breaks. It was when I would send it back for service, I would wait on average four months, and I'd get a bill between five and nine hundred dollars, and that was. A routine thing so I'd have to have literally two machines just to keep one crew in service with one machine because yeah. one was always out being fixed and uh, you've sent stuff back for repair from me yeah how's the turnaround been immediate I mean we've we've got a cross-border issue yeah right getting it back and forth but yeah the turnaround is fantastic the response time has been amazing well, and that's a service. policy that we really we really focus on, it. and for you that are really out there looking at a serious business, I mean, mm -hmm. these are these are important factors. Uh, some yeah. companies promise things, and other people deliver things. I try to under promise and over deliver for my customers. And I think you've talked to Jeff at my shop before, yeah. the one that runs my service, and you know he tries hard to. And help actually, uh, when I've called even on your phone, you've answered it, you know, all the time. If I've been out and about and. I've called. Uh, Charles has always answered the phone and you know, give me, you know, ideas or saying this is what you need to do. So that's been pretty, pretty handy. A lot of people just don't do that. Well, uh, thanks for the for the kind well, chance, but, true. but I mean, really, yeah. for me, the, the the point I was trying to bring home is, you know, service is something that will need to happen to any piece of equipment or tool that you buy, and and we just try and have machines that you can service yourself if you're. If you really need to, if you're really out and about, you can swap out the switches, you can replace the fuses, you can replace the fuse holders. Yeah. Um, and for anything that's harder, we do, we get them in and we get them right out. We have a 48 hour turnaround for, for guys that send equipment back to us. That's our in house policy. It's got to be fixed off the bench in 48 hours. Sometimes we don't get them back to people if they don't give them us their addresses and things <laughs> that fast, but we get them fixed that fast. Yeah. So, okay, so now you're practicing, you practice on your own houses, you practice on your friends and family, mm -hmm. you practice on your empty houses that you're listing. Tell me about your first job. Can you remember it? That was, mm -hmm. uh, that was, uh, well, the first one we did was for your real estate when the dead raccoon went down the chimney. Oh, that was a <laughs> yeah. Wicked, right. wicked older than. That's right. I, I remember that. I forgot about that one, but yeah. it was actually, uh, it was actually in, in uh, our office, real estate office. In the real estate and, office. And a raccoon had uh, crawled down the chimney and, and it. got stuck in the chimney and oh. had been dead there for two or three weeks. Summertime. Uh, yeah. Yes, it was. And so go in the office to work. And so we finally figured out what the what the issue the source was. was. And it was it was uh, quite significant by this time. Yeah. So they brought an exterminator in. He was able to somehow get the carcass get out. the carcass out of the chimney yeah. and then we but up of the course the, the smell was oh. still yeah. knock you over yeah. so so tom and i went in there with our machines Jeez. and uh we we ran them overnight overnight, didn't we? Oh, overnight yeah overnight and the next morning we went in and they yeah. they seriously could not believe that we were able to get rid of that order because you can uh, you can imagine it. So every realtor in your office became a believer of well, that. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, it's business business overnight right. success yeah, story. Yeah, that, right. that was it was truly one of the best things that could have happened. Because wow. from there, the, the word of mouth business that came from that is we really haven't, and that's yeah. one of the things Tom and I have talked about is we really haven't done the s significant advertising that we that we probably need to do. Yeah, we know we need to do that. But without significant advertising, you're still running a yeah. profitable just, business. Yeah, just through, just through word of mouth, uh, the, the jobs are coming in. 
And uh, so, so now Tom's going to be retiring, and so this is going to be a, a full-time gig. So, so we're going to be ramping up. That's why I will need more machines, more trailers. All right. So now it's, there's another little factor to this business that is, in my mind, one of the reasons that it makes it such a, an attractive business. Talk about the labor. What kind of labor is involved in doing a real job? <laughs> set up. Very easy. Go into the house, set up, 15 minutes. Yeah. Tear down, 15 minutes. You gotta let the ozone dissipate once your equipment is shut down. We have meters that we use to read the levels. To, you know, We have respirators. Once again, you have to have the proper training. Yeah. You gotta have the proper training. But for to, to go in and by the time we set up, tear down, Probably in total labor, we'd be looking at an hour, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that'd be perhaps pushing it. That'd be a that'd be a big job. That'd be a big job. That's right. So an average is probably closer to a half hour. Yeah, yeah. Because it takes nothing to go in and set, set the, the machines, machines up. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta know, enough, know where yeah. to put them. It's a little bit like Ronco. You set it and forget it, and then you come back. Exactly. We'll check on it. Exactly. Well, you know, we'll check on it once. Yeah. You know, make sure the meter's still running and get the levels. But you know, it's just straightforward once you do it and each house is different but you hardest know. odors to do I've always believed are cigarette smoke yeah, yeah. that's the one we did at Greenbrier yeah yeah, yeah cigarette smoke can Greenbrier be with a dry uh, yeah. it had because um, it's in every wallpaper yeah and the guy smoked remember that one well and the other thing is how many people there yeah how many people smoke how many packs a day do they smoke how many years do they smoke yeah, so there's a lot of variables when it comes to cigarette smoking that you know yeah. you've got that's to right. define. That's right. And, and in some of the houses, the walls are yellow. Yellow, yeah. From from the smoke, you know, and, that, and that's that's a, that's where the trial and, and error can come in as to how long do you have to that's right. have to uh, run the equipment in these homes. Any odor you've never been able to get out? Nope. No. No. Nope. No, nope, not yet. Anyways, not yet. <laughs> they've come out, but some are tougher than others. You have to spend more time and hit them longer. That's a learning curve, but you can get them out if you you spend time and. Okay, yeah. so you got a successful odor removal business. Yeah, it's. Have you ever done any work on the sanitizing aspect? As far as uh, marketing germ killing or sanitizing no, services, we have not. No. We've been thinking of different things like that. We, we yeah. talked about yeah, it a little bit on the phone, the yeah. three of us. Yeah. And uh, that, that's the way I think we were wanting to go, is just to have a complete business with that trailer so we can do everything that we could possibly do, because we want to run it out of that trailer, so. Um, you never thought about mold remediation or well, any of the other things? Well, yeah, we- We talked about bed bugs yes. yesterday for the very first bed time. Bed bugs, yes. The, we, we actually do mold remediation. Oh, yeah. That's one of the things we, we haven't talked about. Oh, you do? If okay. you remember the first time I met you, you brought a machine over to me in Detroit, and we were, down, right. we were down at NAMP, yeah. and we were uh, sitting in on their, on their, mold, That's right. their mold testing and remediation. You know, I didn't realize that was you until just now. Yeah, yeah. so okay. that's, the, that's the first time we met, actually yeah, face to face. that's right. We had talked previously. Yes. So yeah, so when so, I was planning this trip up to meet you, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so certified in, in mold remediation, we have done a number of, of mold jobs, yeah. and uh, that's a part of you know part of our, our our overall services as well. Yeah, and I think it's a real profit center for people that are looking in, in this this business. It's it's odor removal, it's sanitizing, yeah. it's mold remediation, and, and it can be uh, green pest control. Yes, um, yeah. and that's the one thing that we, we need to talk more on because Tom and I are quite interested in in the bed bug uh, system as well. Um, yeah, that's Tom's true. got contacts, that's the that's city true. of Barrie is half an hour north and they're, from us and all their, their public housing. Well, and I've housing. had lots of calls Canada in low, Canada low, from low. public housing that has bed bug issues. Yes. Awful, awful, awful. So I have a uh, direct contact with the people that look after that. So, um, and that's an ongoing issue. So I have want to get into the bed bug, add it to our trailer. So business. for advertising, what have you done so far? We saw your wrapped letter trailer and you said you get calls um, from that. I did the pay it fast. You do word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, I saw a, a picture you sent me of you set up outside somewhere. Yeah. With a little table. That was at. Um, Twice. 
in the summer, uh, the last two summers, we've been exclusive to a um, sports camp. A in, sports camp. In Northern Ontario. Okay. And they have 2,000 campers that come through the camp every summer. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we've worked exclusively with that camp for the last two, two years. And you can only imagine the word of mouth that comes from 2,000 families mm -hmm. coming through being exposed to your business. Oh, sure. So that's a service. The, that camp actually brought us on as a service because they're so health conscious. That'd probably be worth doing a before and after uh, bacteria swab yeah. and send it to the lab. It cost you yeah. 80 bucks or whatever, but yeah. I'll bet you could turn that into a flyer that would make those moms head spin. Well, they, yeah. they uh, these, these camps, you know, with so many young kids coming through the camps, they can't afford to have a sickness or an illness or an infection. Uh, so they've really embraced our, our program Great. With, with their with their campers and so from that and that that camp is three hours north of here and just from that exposure the it's calls other lots camps, of new camps. odor removal business yeah. oh and other camps how many other, camps other oh. camps there's 450 camps 450 are part of that camps. association wow yeah. Yeah. and so we've we not can. we've not gone down that we've not exploited we that enough trailers like, yeah. like wow. we need to right. and i think probably for us more than anything it was it was proving our system mm -hmm. to make sure our system worked and you mentioned there's another guy in town that does hockey gear stuff and he uh, charges a uh, triple what you do and is not as effective it's 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 a different system totally you wash uh -huh. it but the, yeah the hockey equipment's not designed to be washed mm -hmm. unfortunately and and um, yeah, the chemicals so we've had we've had some we've had some feedback from people that have used that system that just said it was wearing wearing their equipment out and, and you don't find that the ozone wears out the equipment. No, no, it just gets rid of the odor, gets rid of the bacteria, gets rid of the viruses, and that's right. makes it fresh and ready to wear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can imagine these sports camps in the middle. I of played hockey for five years when I was growing up as a kid, and it's yeah. people that are out there that are not from a northern climate. You mm. sweat more in your hockey gear than yeah. just about any other equipment I've ever worn. More well, bacteria in hockey gear than anything you'll ever find. Well, you got to see these kids in the middle of summer. Middle of July, 100% humidity oh. the, inside these dressing rooms, and it is incredible because because they'll come they come to, from Cleveland. They're coming from all over New York State. Yeah, to, you to these best camps. hockey players are in Canada. Everybody knows. And then so. and then the parents say they got to drive back to back to Cleveland but with the bag with the bag in the car in the car, and they they can't deal with it. I mean, and, and so that, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of word, word of, of mouth exposure there, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a, a really decent uh, profit margin as well. Great, that's a profitable part of, of what we do. And for for Tom and I, we could we could leverage off that camp to a number of other camps, which we plan on doing. But it's but the trailer. You know, Tom was really instrumental in in the first design, and you know you got to fine tune it, redesign it, try something, and so now finally we know we've got a system that works, that's and so right. that that's a big part of it. We can't go out and, and all of a sudden take on, you know, twenty sports yeah. camps and have a system that we're still prototyping. That's so now right. we've worked through that process. Yeah, we know we've got good equipment. Yeah, that's durable. That's that, right. That'll yeah. run for. <laughs> When did I meet you in Cleveland? When did we? And four years. Machine, Mine's four years. Old. I think it's more than that. To be it might honest. be more than that. I yeah. think it's more than that. that because when we were in Cleveland, that had to be. And I got it before that. that. Had to be five years ago. Yeah, well, yeah. it could have been. Yeah. When you said my, I, that I was going to have a baby. Probably was I was going to have your a baby. first baby. Wife, she was just pregnant. going for this pregnant. Yeah, yeah. that's fun. Yeah, I believe that. So yeah, so we've been. So now, now we've. And I've out. really tried to get the NAMP guys to grasp how vital ozone is to mold remediation. I've tried to get the IAQ guys to understand it. And they're, our country, Canada, they're full of mold remediators that are leaving behind moldy structures. Yeah, yeah. And the reason is quite simple. When you have three-dimensional interfaces that come together, there are nooks and crannies and crevices and cul-de-sacs. This is verbiage that was used by scientists at Los Alamos, where the spores are gonna hide, the MVOCs, the mycotoxins, all the little piecey parts of mold, 
that only a gas will penetrate, and it, it is a really vital component of mold remediation. It's not a substitute for it. I think this is the, the hang-up in the industry, is they hear there have been so many ozone hacks out there that have gone out and said, well, you can use ozone as a substitute for uh, mold remediation, uh, when it, which is absolutely not true. You know, I'm the author of Got Mold, Now What? And ozone, for us, is something we do during the process at night to control uh, our worker exposure to living mold. And it's something that we do at the end after all the cleanup is done, after all the processes have been implemented to, to eradicate the stuff we can't see that we missed. Yeah, I, I did that actually as a test, Charles. I did a small job. It was uh, a house that had sold and uh, during the home inspection, mm -hmm. the inspector came up with a small amount of mold in the cold cellar. Okay. So they called me, I went in, remediated the mold, did what we had to do, and I did an air test mm -hmm. to, uh, just to just to check to make sure. Now, I hadn't run, hadn't run the ozone machines mm -hmm. yet, but I did an air test, and, and I, I sent that test to the lab, and then I ran the equipment, the ozone machines, for eight hours, and I did another air test. The first air test failed. The one that I did without running the machines, yeah. the second test was a pass. Yeah. yeah. So that, that proved to me that what, you know, and, and, and I did a good job at remediating. Like, visibly, the mold was gone. That's right. Right? But it wasn't well, until the ozone. There was still some in airborne mold, yeah. and the ozone was able to eliminate it. That's right. And that goes contrary to everything anybody in the mold removal business believes. I've seen it a thousand times. I know it works. I have customers all over, uh, well, all over the world that have uh, that are in these types of industries that have done those same or similar types of tests. I've got guys that are in the the reclamation of freight industry that have my ozone machine set up in, in tented chambers for, um, you know, on the high seas you get a, a cargo container that gets punctured, water gets in, humidity gets in, instead of actually being able to destroy the goods, these guys buy them at, for next to nothing and then they have their ozone chambers and they're able to recondition a huge majority of it using just ozone gas to get rid of the spores and it will actually break down the spores, it can break down the beta-glucans that cause the are proteins that cause the allergenic response, it'll break down the mycotoxins, it destroys the MVOCs. This is a really, really powerful tool in the war against mold and fungus and it's, mm. it's I believe totally underutilized. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's underutilized in the contamination wars that we need, which should be used in every hospital room. And yeah. In sure. my mind, at least once a night after the surgeries are done, you should be filling that room with the gas and, mm -hmm. and sanitizing the surfaces. Um, you know, we have, I don't know how the numbers read in Canada, but in the U.S., hospital acquired uh, infections are just through the oh, roof. Yeah. This so. And it's, this um, so. You know, because it's really hard to teach people, and who do we rely on in our hospital industry to do the sanitizing? Cleaners. The, the guy they with just, the broom that's getting right the there. lowest pay in the whole hospital, so right? And right what right they do is they'll put their disinfectant in their mop bucket <coughs> and mop it around. Well, virtually every disinfectant says it's got to be to the point of wetting, and it's got to stay there for a minimum of like usually a 10-minute dwell time. Well, nobody does it's that. It's not going to happen. And nobody does that. Whereas a gas, it can get into the places that no liquid will ever penetrate. Yeah. And once you hit concentrations, the exposure time to kill germs is very low. Okay. And the Penn State study, which people can download on the website, once they hit concentrations, they tested from 10 second intervals to 480 second intervals, got 99% kill logs at all mm -hmm. time intervals tested. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's a, a really huge thing. And I think that sanitizing is a really underworked, overlooked area of at the application of ozone yeah. gas. And it really leads to um, the opportunities for repeat customers and service contracts. You know, yeah. and that's where real money is. Real that's wealth true. gets built off of yeah. repeat contracts. You know, Absolutely. once and done jobs are great. But you make so much more money when you sell a service contract. And if you can go to their house 12 times a year versus once, it's 12 times the revenue stream. It's interesting as we sit here and just talk about 
the number of different applications for ozone. You, you, you forget almost <laughs> how, uh, how versatile. It is you know, amazing to me still manufacturing ozone equipment for nearly six years now. Every month I still have someone that calls me for some random application yeah. of ozone I've never considered. Yeah. I've got a guy who has a meerschaum pipe disinfecting business who goes to trade shows and disinfects meerschaum pipes for five bucks. Who knew? Okay. I sold a couple of machines crazy. last month to a guy that has a business decontaminating frack water. Then he uses the ozone to get rid of the effluent gases in the airstream that come off of the water that he's uh, processed. So there's just so many things that you never think about that ozone is effective for. Mushroom farmers using my equipment. Walnut farmers using my equipment. Yeah, it makes sense. To all kinds of different Potato things. farmers even use ozone. Oh, the Frito, I've got a huge customer in Mexico who does potato storage yeah, for Frito Lay. They do that, yeah. And they use our ozone oh. machines in the storage uh, buildings to keep the mold down. It has to, yeah. Um, for spores, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're the biggest potato. I know. Capital right here. Yeah, so, oh, right here so, you are. So, yeah. Huge. Right, we've got Frito, Frito Lay warehouses everywhere. Oh, so right that's here. that's an application that we've not even. We haven't even. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's a huge, it. huge yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. So ozone is, is so versatile. And so we asked you, I asked you about your first job. I asked you if there's any odors you never got out. You said you got them all out. I've asked you about the kinds of advertising. Have you ever done any other kind of guerrilla marketing, flyers, postcards, you know, buttons? Well, we had the, we've had the trailer, which we were focused on for the longest time. We got it up and running. And so we both still had full-time jobs. So we were, um, we knew what we could do and we knew how big this could take off so fast. So what we've been trying to do is just pull back a wee bit because once we go out and do a full blown advertisement and start doing what we want to do, then you got to go to work. We're going to be too busy and we're not going to, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, I said so, that at the time. Are you ready for this? Yeah. So ready? that's why uh, <laughs> we know what we have to do, but we've been trying to get to this point and now we're getting to this point. So um, now we're just piecing, like Jeff, Jeff said, the website and the advertising. Once we do that and, you know, I start going to see people that I know with bed bugs and I have contacts in the, in the government for the military and we get 6,000 cadets out there every year in tents and their packs are given to them and they all have to be cleaned and washed. So, I mean, if I ever even start to touch where I have to go, I don't even know if I could keep up. So, I mean, it's just... What would you say to anybody that's out there in the world of internet land who's watching this video or looking to buy one of my machines or prove that it works or, or start this kind of a business? I'd say I looked for a long time and... Um, What's the positive? What are the pros and what are the cons? You know, the pro pros is it's very, very cheap to get into. Like it's not a very... You get a lot of money out of your pocket and it just... It's a short labor thing for someone that's any age that can learn it and then uh, you can make whatever amount of money you want or work as many hours as you want but you can do so many jobs and it just leave the door the door is open for such a small in investment and it's great I love it I love the idea of it and um, you don't no regrets no regrets because everything I've done and I tested for four years because I wanted to do all different stuff and it worked well, and, it and, it and, go, and going back to having the right equipment. The equipment is, was is key. key. Yeah, we started yeah. with a little 500, <laughs> little tiny thing, and we didn't know what we were getting into. And then yeah. I said to Jeff, uh, we put it in a house or something, and it wasn't even blowing. So <laughs> when I found your website with your machine, and I said, Jeff, I found it, it was moving the curtains. <laughs> so that was our first, like, wow, now we can move over. Oh, so you've uh, used other brands of yes, those. Yes, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. Uh, I tell you, it was... No good, yeah. <laughs> but because you have to move the ozone, and that your machines have the power to do that, and they have the output. And you know there have been, and I got at say, least fifteen attempts to start nationwide in the U.S. franchises with ozone, and they've all failed. And yeah. I believe it's not the opportunity; it's the equipment every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a big uh, outfit from Canada called Airtrona. Have you ever heard of them? No, no. And they have a, a truck-mounted ozone system. So their their franchise is eighty grand, and um, they put the machine inside the truck, and then they have hoses. 
And uh, I believe they do that so they can't commoditize the, the equipment. Yes, so people right. don't Makes realize sense. how yeah, 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 yeah. inexpensively they could be doing this. Right. And it's the model that they sell it for is cars. As if you could ever repay your $80,000 investment just on yeah. cars. There's so many things. And I get these customers that get stuck on apartments or they get stuck on boats yeah. or they get stuck on houses or whatever. And the, the real truth of the matter is there are multiple streams of revenue here. You just need to put all the hooks in the water that's right. and catch a lot of fish. Yeah, that's it. That's it. The, yeah. it's, as we've said, such a versatile uh, product. I'll call it a product. Yeah. But but it really is. It is. And, it can, it's a, you know, it, it it's takes a big business. If you really, uh, it'll turn into a big well, business. We did a t we did a ton of research online. Oh, we did. And, and we I for hours spoke today. to you on the phone so many times, and we've we went out and we tried stuff that didn't work, and we've rebuilt the trailer now three times, and and so it, it does take to start the business. It does. You just can't go like a bull in a china shop. That's it, right. it takes a little bit of knowledge. Takes a little bit of a finesse. Mm -hmm. You need to know how ozone works. Yes. Why why it works? What why it doesn't work? And you have to have the proper equipment. We've got meters to read the levels meters. we create. We've got respirators. Yeah. When you go into someone's home and the place is full of ozone gas, yeah. You know you just can't walk in the door. So it takes a, a little bit of knowledge. But anybody with a little bit of hands on, a little wherewithal, a little motivation. I'd say some training. Not a problem. A little bit of training would help. Yeah. And so you're kind of excited about the International Association of Yes, yeah, so I think the training is, uh, is a very important. We didn't have the training. There was really nowhere out there to train by just sitting at hours to 2 in the morning on the internet. And your site was great when I finally found it. And yeah. it had uh, everything that I actually was looking for and uh, passed it on to Jeff. We worked together. So the training was huge. We trained ourselves, but it would have been nice to, yeah. you know, sit in one of your uh, training sessions or whatever, and yeah. then, you know, you get a, you know, right off the bat, you get a little bit more kickstart. That's, right. That's right. And I've helped, I'm probably about 20 different guys build their own ozone trailers over the phone, and so this is the first time I'll be offering the, the trailer as a product, and mm -hmm. and I just think that you guys are really exemplary in, in your ability to not be limited in your thinking to see the big picture and to go after all the different applications. You know, that's what really uh, yeah. makes this a, a viable business model for anybody that's willing to use a little bit of elbow grease. Well, they're all yeah. tremendous revenue streams. Yeah. Oh, that's that's the bottom line. line. Yeah. And, and, and when, when people experience the system, yeah. when, when we actually go in and we do a boat or we do an RV, oh, yeah. uh, a, a friend of mine asked me if he could do his tent trailer. And I said, sure, open up the tent truck. We threw the machine in. His wife was raving. She's pre prepared to go camping again. Oh, she wasn't going to go camping before because it smells <laughs> like mold or something. so bad. Well, it's they, they yeah. do stink. Like, yeah. and uh, the women don't like that. Boats, I know, the village where the water's oh, in there. Yeah. And I know guys that have big boats and a lot of money, and they all have the same problem. So, um, mm -hmm. it mine, is a big problem. It is a big just problem. Just in Florida, it one of my guys problem. here, that's it. They got the snowbirds, so a lot of them are Canadian, a lot of them are yeah. northerners from the U.S. Their boat sits, you know, all summer long, and they That's come right. back in the winter. They come down in the winter time, and it stinks. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this guy had a thirty-foot uh, sailboat he bought a couple of years ago, and he does a lot of sailing with his wife and his daughter. And um, wicked smell, and he came <coughs> to me word of mouth through work, knowing that I did some ozoning mm -hmm. and through people at work that I've done vehicles and different stuff, stuff for. And he came right over and said, can you do my boat? Because my wife does not want to go on it with that smell. And I said, sure. So we did his boat and she, I, you know, her, she was so thankful. Like it was like, she wasn't going on it unless that smell was gone. And they tried everything. So it just, it works like, you know, but you just gotta figure it out. And okay, so in, to wrap this all up here, you think it's a great, opportunity for anybody that really wants to I think it's a great start a business yeah you believe in my machines any thoughts on the new machines that I just brought up today because this is the first time you've actually put your hands on my new designs <laughs> well, we, well we turned the first machine on yeah. and it almost blew to I can palm, smell palm, ozone palm, 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 palm. yeah I moved my hair and I like the idea of it it had uh, a system which just quickly looked at that you could vacuum 
actually a coach with it was added. Well, on. there's no vacuuming, but you can blow the gas. Yeah, and blow the gas into, into it. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Blow the glass into it. I like that idea. And you know, um, every once in a while you get spot, spot treatment, spot treatment, urine, and yes. things like yes. that. Yes. So I thought that was a key to the new new thing. Was you can that's another window that opens up a little job in furniture, like you know, because I know a lot of couples that have that furniture problem that cost them eight hundred dollars. You get it steam cleaned. Yeah. And, it's, and they're putting, uh, and they're water. putting water on it, right? So yeah. that's what I seen just off the bat was the power from it and that little add-on was great. So awesome. Well, the fact we've got two of the first machines you've ever built. Yeah. yeah. And if these machines are better than them. They're better than them. <laughs> we're happy. They're better. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for everyone that's watching. Uh, Thank you. Guys, they've done such a great job in their business. Get one of his uh, machines. Get three of them, actually. Yeah. Just, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time today to talk yeah. to me. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Ah. Thanks a lot. Folks, it's Charles again with the Bio Blasters. I'm here with uh, my customers, uh, Jeff and Tom, with uh, Odor Busters here in um, Alliston, Ontario. And they have made a rather successful business of doing ozone treatments uh, all over Ontario and what's really exciting to me about their business is their odor removal trailer so this isn't just a trailer folks it's an ozone machine and you've done more than just sanitize hockey equipment and other sports equipment with this machine haven't you yeah that's right uh, Charles I started playing around with ozone probably seven or eight years ago yeah uh, selling real estate and ran into a number of smelly homes, pets. So you throw a Fido in here? Or? <laughs> <laughs> so what I did was I, I bought a couple of machines off you. Yeah. Uh, Tom and I were working together at the time. We've done some research, yep. picked up a couple of machines, uh, just through word of mouth, started to ozone a number of different homes. People. So like, what kind of stuff have you put in here besides the hockey equipment? That's my big question. Oh, we've done, uh, Jeff uh, up north, he's done uh, at a hockey camp, 2,000 kids. They have biking helmets, they have life uh, life jackets that smell year after year, so we've hung racks of like... You ever put furniture? And we have actually done anything? furniture for my cousin, like mo uh, she had uh, mothballs in the furniture because they, they like antiques, so we've actually put the furniture in here and cranked it up and actually she got rid of the mothball smell. Awesome. So it's a multi-purpose so multi unit. Have you ever tried smoke stuff yet in here? Yeah, I actually had a, an interesting project. I got a call from the Toronto Transit Authority. Yeah. And they had a half a dozen subway cars that were flooded okay. uh, during heavy, heavy rain. And of course, it was black water that ran through the subway cars. And they were going to throw all the seats out in the cars. And so they asked to, to do a test on the seats to see if we could kill all the bacteria in the seats. And, and of course, it was super successful. Killed all of it? Killed, killed all of it. And they were able to reuse the seats? Yeah, yeah. actually we tested it at the lab. Yeah. Uh, we had a lab in Toronto that we worked with. So we took the seats down uh, afterwards, had them tested. Uh, zero coliforms, it was fa fantastic. It was so it was in the hundreds or thousands before and then yeah, went to zero? It was, it was off the charts before. Wow. Because yeah. the seats were literally soaked with, with flooded water and you know who knows what was in that water. But And each one of those seats cost the Transit Authority $400 and we were able to bring them back to life for a fraction of that. So That's amazing. Yeah. So folks, it's not just ozone machines, it's also big ozone machines that can really add bottom line value to your business. That's correct. Okay, let me just make sure we got all this in. Do a quick rewind here.